as humans, you cannot help but feel deeply the loss of such a person. But at the same time, when we think of the wonderful life, the Christian example she has demonstrated both within her family and the community, and wherever she passed, the immense contribution she has made to the Four Roads Club, we cannot but give thanks and praise to God and rejoice for her life. We firmly believe that Sister Kelman had served her Lord and her fellow men well, and therefore she is promoted to glory. And now she's resting from all pain and sorrows on the breast of her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For all of you here today, both family and friends, she has left you a great legacy to follow, a legacy of love, faith, and commitment. If you follow that legacy, assuredly, you will meet her in heaven and live with her and the Lord Jesus forever. Today, I wish I would have been with you on this memorable occasion as a former core officer of Four Roads Club. But as my Four Roads was my first appointment from training college in June 1984. In particular, the Kelman family, Brother Kelman, Mrs. Kelman, my, th my three then special junior soldiers, Jonathan, Paula, and Marsha, has marked my officership career, my life forever. This was my t team for the open air meetings. Brother Kelman with the PA system, Sister Kelman with her timbrel, Jonathan and Paula with the instruments, and Marsha with the drum, and a few other comrades, such as the late Sister Mares, Sister Lord, Sister Elizabeth, etc. What Holy Ghost Spirit-filled open-air meetings we used to have in the street corners of Four Roads, and the fellowship time at the home league with Mrs. Kelman. There was none equal to it. What about the Bible studies on Tuesday night with Brother Kelman? Wow, they were amazingly unenjoyable. I remember the first Sunday that I was there in Barbados. Mrs. Cameron invited me for dinner with her family. Having been so far away from my family and not knowing how to even cook a good meal, that kind of hospitality meant a lot to me. She was indeed a spiritual mother to me, and I will never forget her. I will miss her. Major Eve Rose joins me in sending our sympathy and best regards to the Kelman family. Brother Jonathan Kelman, Major Jonathan, Major Paula Pyle, and Marsha Kelman. Our thoughts and prayers are with you at this trying moment. May the God of all grace comfort your hearts and give you the peace that transcends all understanding. May her soul rest in peace. May the perpetual light shine upon her. Prayerfully and thoughtfully yours, Major Evros and Philo Exaltus. Good morning. I'd like to read a bit of scripture. I assure you that I'm not going to preach. I've been advised that we have a strict timeline to follow. So you need not fear. It comes from first Peter two two part two pieces of scripture. First Peter three, three and four. That says, do not let your adornment be merely outward arranging your hair or weary gold or putting on fine apparel. Rather, let it be the hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible beauty of a humble and quiet spirit. And 1 Timothy 2, 9 and 10 says, In like manner, also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with propriety, 
and in moderation. Not with braided hair or gold or pearls or coxy clothing, but which is proper for women professing godliness with good works. I read those two parts of scripture trying to give a context which we want to pay this brief tribute to Stella Erita Monica Kelman Nee Maynard. We knew her as Monica. I first, well, my memory of Monica goes back to the early, the early 60s. So that is over 50 years. So you would understand that if I don't remember all, that's a lot of time, eh? But I remember distinctly this young Christian lady whom I met. I had just become a Christian at the Six Rows. It was then Pilgrim Holiness Church. And uh, as far as I remember, we started the Christian walk together because we sat in Congress class and we were baptized together in June of 19, Ju July of 1960, 1961. That may be contested, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure. However, this is, is my memory of her. And, uh, you know, I remember her as one who was the model Christian. And I would say a model Pilgrim Holiness slash Wesleyan Holiness Christian. In those days, the church emphasized just standard. You had to dress a certain way. And as young as Monica was, that was no problem with her. Because in the, in the text that I read, Peter speaks to the church that as far as Christians are concerned, we should, and I, they, Repeat that. Not we. I'm speaking here of the women. And don't 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 get offended if the emphasis is just on the women. Because the women mostly offend. That's true? Alright. Of course. The emphasis is not where it used to be. It would be a good thing if we would say a little more about that appropriate dressing or modest attire. But Peter addresses this, and I can say of Monica, as far as I remember her, Monica was always appropriately dressed. And I think appropriately even is a better word than modest. Some people may say modest is a relative word. But Monica was always appropriately dressed, whether in church or out of church. There's never an instance that I met Monica, either at church or in the supermarket or wherever, Monica was always appropriately dressed. But Peter not only really addresses outward attire, he addresses inward attire. And I think this is where uh, this scripture speaks quintessentially of the person and the kind of Christian that Monica was. When it says that instead of the outward attire be the emphasis, let the inward, the inward person, that hidden person of the heart, which is beauty that is unfading, the beauty of a gentle and a quiet spirit. And that was Monica, a person with a gentle and quiet spirit. She was not only outwardly dressed appropriately, but she was inwardly dressed. 
more than appropriate. She was a shining example, a model of what a true Christian young woman should be. I had the opportunity to walk with Monica many nights alone. In those early days, we ran the street light, right? Former minister. We didn't have any street lights, so it was dark and lonely. Fields of cane we passed through, but Monica and I walked. And you know, we had to pass through four roads where it fell in line. It, it was a call line in then, I don't know what it was. But the fellas, the fellas hang out right on the steps of this marshal shop. And you know, we passed, we passed there to and fro from church, Monica and Nolly, on, on several occasions, and there was never a word, a slur made uh, about, about us and about her as a young woman because she had a witness, a manifestation that went out that said what kind of person she was. Let me, let me, let me add something to that to illustrate. Um, just yesterday, her husband spoke to me about an incident that he had. Um, As a young man, a handsome we went searching for treasure all the way from St. Andrew and he found a gem in St. Philip. <laughs> and he told me that one day the boys, because you know those men, young men and four roads felt that they were the gate to the district. You know, they, 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 they were the keepers. <laughs> they were the keepers of the gate. So he, they said to him one day, Look, you have a good woman. And you don't think that fellas on the block could discern what is good in a woman. But they could tell Stanley that he had a good woman. He had found a treasure, a gem in, in Monica. Together they built a home in St. Philip and they raised the family. Handsome young man, Jonathan, and two lovely girls. They are grown up and they have their families and uh, now more, more than that they are up there their Jonathan and Paula is in ministry in the Salvation Army and Paula and Marsha is in Barbados serving also the church. Monica was a very active person in church. When I was there, I was became a president when I left in '64 for college. Um, she was also some school teacher. She became assistant superintendent. She was missionary society president for a number of years, and. When I returned in, in, in 70 as pastor, the family was there and they were making a contribution to the development of the church. And I would say indeed that they made a tremendous contribution to our church. We thank God for this family. We thank God for Monica and the, the kind of uh, testimony that she has left. She has left a shining legacy. Amen. A legacy that speaks of her godly Christian life, her faithfulness as a wife and mother, and her commitment 
as a Christian. She's gone to be the Lord with the Lord. We believe that she is sheltered in the open arms of Jesus. Amen. Now she rests in peace. Amen. God bless her memory. To all those who will feel her passing was keenly. And we continue uh, to trust God for this family. May God continue to strengthen and help them in this time of loss. God bless you. grandmother, a sister, friend, woman of God, 
and our adopted mother, we say goodbye, fairly well. We were privileged to have met such a wonderful woman of God that developed into a very close relationship in which she referred to us as the children. She invested in all aspects of our lives. I remember when I, Rudolph, told her I was going to get married. She sat me down and she spoke to me at great length, advising me of this great step that I was about to take in my life. She gave me some tips of how to keep my house happy, and believe me, they are still working for me to this day. Amen. In our ministry, I could never ask for a better local. She was faithful to her work and her church. She can never be, we can never recall a time when she said no to her duties. If the church door was open, you were sure to see mommy inside. She really gave her time and talents for the work. She was one of the mothers of the Four Roots Corps. We can recall the many times we have enjoyed her cooking and baking. If mommy baked, we did not have to ask. Our portion was put aside and no one would touch it. Whenever she baked, her tender pork chops, ours was put aside. Anytime we visited the house, we could go straight to the fridge to get our plus. We were treated no differently from the rest of, the, of her children. Away from all of our relatives, mommy made sure that we knew, we knew what to do to take care of Alex even before he was born. She said to me, read and play music for him as early as possible. And it is evident that that was good advice as we have seen that Alexander has developed a love for reading and is passionate about music too. We miss you dearly mom, but we know that you have gone to a better place and we have a hope that one day we will reunite with you in our heavenly home. We are sure that your legacy will live in our hearts as the words of this poem expresses one of your attributes that we can never forget. Her smile, though her smile is gone forever, and her hand I cannot touch, I still have so many memories of the one I loved so much. Her memory is now my keepsake, which with I'll never part. God has her in his keeping. I have her in my heart. Sadly missed, but not forgotten. That was written by an anonymous person. And Rudolph and Captain Rudolph and Andy ends with this scripture, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all of you who have longed for his appearing. Servant of God, well done. Rest in peace.